Today, we're talking about money, big money. Each year, the United States Navy spends about $60 billion on operating and supporting its fleet of just under 300 ships. Sounds like a lot, right? But to put things in perspective, each year Americans spend $70 billion on lottery tickets, $80 billion on cigarettes, and about $100 billion on beer. But the beer is justified. In this video, we'll find out how much it really costs to operate each type of ship in the US Navy, starting with the least to the most expensive. If you know anything about the world of warships, it's probably not too difficult to guess which type of warship is the most expensive to operate, but the cheapest one is not what you think. But if you don't know about the world of warships, you're about to find out, thanks to Wargaming who's sponsoring this video. World of Warships is a PC game with realistic landscapes, stunning graphics, and it's absolutely free to play. You have over 300 historical ships to choose from, and you can even customize them to your liking. You can also join your friends in divisions to play strategic team-based battles. Did we mention the graphics are pretty cool and the game is free? Sign up and enjoy World of Warships using the link in the description. Use the code BOOM and you'll get an exclusive starter pack including 200 doubloons, 2 ships St. Louis and the premium ship Emden, 20x restless fire camouflage, 2.5 million credits, that's a lot of credits, and a 7 day premium access all free of charge. These benefits are only available to new players, so this is the best time to try out World of Warships. And we're back to not what you think. So, which warship in the US Navy do you think costs the least to operate? Here's a hint, it rhymes with some fault. According to the Congress Budget Office or CBO, the Zonwall Destroyer has the lowest annual operating cost for any warship in the US Navy at $100 million. Not bad for a $7.5 billion ship. But what is this $100 million spent on? The operating costs can be split into three categories, direct, indirect, and overhead costs. Direct costs include things like crew salaries, fuel, supplies, and repair and maintenance. Indirect costs include expenditures for various support units that are necessary for combat units to fight effectively. Think naval bases, maintenance yards, and so on. Overhead costs include administrative units that help recruit, train, and equip each vessel, medical expenditure, and other types of bureaucracy. Also keep in mind that the crew size, meaning the number of people on board a ship, is always smaller than the total number of personnel assigned to that ship. This could be because some ships have a dual crewing system, but also the majority of the personnel play a support or administrative role. Even though Zonwall destroyers have a crew size of 180, the total number of personnel dedicated to each ship is 500. So in case of Zonwalt, that $100 million annual operating cost is made up of direct, indirect and overhead costs of 40, 20 and 40 million dollars per ship respectively. Now $100 million is a lot of money, but not if you're Mukesh Ambani, the richest man in India who spent $100 million on his daughter's wedding. The desserts must have been delicious. Next in line are littoral combat ships, LCS-1 Freedom Class and LCS-2 Independence Class. Littoral combat ships' mission ranges from patrolling coastal areas to port visits to anti-piracy. Each littoral combat ship has a total annual operating cost of $100 million, just like Zomwalt. But since littoral combat ships are much smaller than Zomwalt destroyers, we deem them more expensive to operate compared to Zomwalt. The total number of personnel per ship is 430. As of 2021, there are 21 completed ships of both classes, which means that it costs $2.1 billion to operate the littoral fleet each year. Estimates for construction costs of both LCS classes range from $350 to $500 million. However, CBO estimates that the average cost to build and fully equip one LCS class ship is about $1.3 billion. But how much is $1.3 billion? That's enough money to buy every American a nice cup of coffee. With 122 VLS cells and a powerful Aegis combat system, the Ticonderoga guided missile cruiser is a multi-role ship capable of supporting carrier battle groups or amphibious forces as well as operating independently. The average cost to build a Ticonderoga cruiser was $2.4 billion. 
Ticonderoga cruisers were built in the 1980s and have a total annual operating cost of $110 million per ship. That's actually not too bad for the second most expensive surface combatant ever built for the US Navy. And you know what else is from the 1980s and costs $110 million? This painting by Basquiat. It must have been that steely blue color. The workhorse of the US Navy, the Arleigh Burke destroyers have an annual operating cost of $140 million per ship. Arleigh Burke destroyers' mission ranges from patrolling sea lanes and providing overseas presence to supporting other surface ships, carriers and submarines. If we divide the total number of personnel assigned to all the 68 Arleigh Burke destroyers, we end up with 720 personnel per ship. By the way, did you know that in 2016, the United States gave Iran an Arleigh Burke destroyer? Well, maybe not exactly, but the US did make a cash payment of $1.7 billion due to the effectiveness of the US and international sanctions on Iran, which is equivalent to the cost of building one Arleigh Burke destroyer. Attack submarines such as Los Angeles, Seawolf and Virginia class have an annual operating cost of $140 million per boat. Their mission is to destroy submarines and surface ships with torpedoes and missiles as well as striking targets on land. In total, the US Navy has 50 nuclear-powered attack submarines with an average assigned personnel of 390 per boat. The construction cost of the latest Virginia-class submarine was $2.8 billion, which happens to be the same as the cost of postponing the 2020 Tokyo Olympic Games because of a pandemic. The 14 Ohio-class ballistic missile submarines carry about half of the US active strategic thermonuclear warheads. Every submarine carries 24 Trident missiles with up to 8 nuclear warheads each. The US Navy also operates four Ohio guided cruise missile submarines. With an average of 660 military personnel assigned to it, the annual cost of running each submarine is $170 million. The primary role of these 14 ballistic missile submarines is nuclear deterrence, which is one of the three prongs of America's nuclear triad. So every year, the United States spends $2.4 billion on operating these submarines to make sure we avoid a nuclear war. And that $2.4 billion is equal to the amount of taxes that the IRS failed to collect from the richest taxpayers in the US for the 2020 tax year. Amphibious assault ships such as WASP or San Antonio class are designed to conduct operations that involve moving troops and equipment from sea to hostile land. These ships usually operate in an amphibious ready group, which consists of one amphibious assault ship, one amphibious transport dock ship, and one dock landing ship. An amphibious ready group can carry one marine expeditionary unit. On average, each amphibious assault ship has 1,450 personnel associated with it. Note that this number does not include the marine expeditionary unit aboard the ships, which consists of 2,200 personnel and 30 aircraft. The US Navy operates about 30 amphibious ships, which is enough to support 10 amphibious-ready groups. However, the US Marine Corps only maintains 7 marine expeditionary units. Due to data limitations, CBO only provides an average annual operating cost for all classes of amphibious ships, which is $270 million per ship. And that's how much LeBron James made from playing salary over the first 16 years of his career. But don't worry, he made more than double that in endorsements. The US Navy has 11 nuclear-powered supercarriers. Since one of the carriers is undergoing refit at any given moment and only a few are being deployed at any given time, the US Navy only has 9 air wings. Each carrier has an average number of 6,590 military personnel. The average annual operating cost of a supercarrier is $1.18 billion. A carrier air wing typically consists of 4,860 personnel, with an annual operating cost of $910 million per unit. So, considering a carrier including the air wing, its annual operating cost is $2.1 billion. This is roughly equivalent to a single launch of NASA's new Space Launch System, which is estimated to cost $2 billion per launch, excluding R&D of course. But since an aircraft carrier by itself has limited ability to defend itself, it relies on other classes of ships for defense against missiles, aircraft, and submarines. 
A carrier strike group usually consists of at least one cruiser, at least two destroyers, and sometimes a supply ship or a submarine. Depending on the exact composition of a carrier strike group, its operational cost is anywhere between six to eight million dollars per day. In total, the annual cost of operating 11 carriers and 9 air wings is around $21 billion. And yes, $21 billion is a lot of money, but I think we all know one divorce settlement that costs it way more than that.